Hollywood Brown, you are a Kansas City Chief, and Brett Veach may have just completed the three-peat today. Hollywood Brown signs with KC, but what's next? That's what we're going to talk about here on the Chief Support by Chat Sports. We appreciate you watching here. I'm your host, Jay Sanders, and well, man, I cannot tell you how excited I am for this because we've been waiting for Brett Veach to make a move for a wide receiver. He gets it done last night with a very good option. I was looking at Darnell Mooney. I was looking at Curtis Samuel. And I was looking at Marquise Brown. They get it done. Marquise seems excited. Patrick seems excited. It's just all around a great thing. Let's go to the report from Ian Rapport. Kind of going through this contract a little bit as this came out last night, 10 o'clock, if you missed the video. Hollywood Brown is signing with the Chiefs on another high-octane target for Patrick Mahomes. One of the most talented wide receivers available, Brown lands in a perfect spot on a one-year deal worth up to $11 million with a chance to cash in next year. Now, worth up to $11 million, what exactly does that mean? Well, that means there's incentives, there's other things that can be added on, there's signing bonuses, but... $8 million is his base salary. If you watched my video last night, that's about what I said his cap it would be. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the cap it. There's still signing bonuses that could be taken out of it. We don't know the official numbers just yet. Now, before the signing, though, the Chiefs did have around $15 million in cap space. So if you're saying six to eight million, you still got some money to spend to re-sign some of your guys. Now, there is Derek Nadi that they re-signed yesterday. They re-signed Tershawn Wharton. We don't have those numbers as well. So we're going to have to wait and see what exactly the Chiefs are left with after all their moves yesterday, which is kind of crazy considering I think they have already completed what would be a perfect offseason in my mind. Hollywood, though, was pretty excited himself. He tweeted this out last night, 9.57, just before the reports came out, saying, Beyond bless, beyond, bless beyond message, Chiefs kingdom, let's rock. And the best part about this tweet was not the wording, not all that. It was the picture. He had this ready, man. He knew it. Hollywood had been talking with the Chiefs for the past three, four days. He was ready, and man, I am so excited because he is going to be an absolute force on this team. And honestly, I think he alone makes it to where the Super Bowl, at least you're going to be playing at it in New Orleans. I mean, I just don't know how you don't. Literally, the only problem last year was wide receivers dropping passes. Patrick Mahomes was able to win with those guys. Now you have Marquise Brown, a year two Rasheed Rice. LeJarrius Steed seems like he's staying. Chris Jones is back. Drew Tranquil's here. I, I, I'm just, I'm baffled at Brett Veach and how well he has been able to work out, work out this offseason in what is a pretty perfect way. So with Hollywood Brown now signed to the Kansas City Chiefs, what's your confidence level in a three-peat? Scale it down in the comment section, one through ten. I want to hear your opinion on today's show. One through ten, one being least confident in the Chiefs, ten being most confident in the Chiefs. Hollywood Brown, how much does he add? Funny enough, we talked about Drew Tranquil and the text he got from Andy Reid before he signed with the Chiefs last year. Well, Andy Reid was back at work because he texted this to Hollywood Brown just a couple days ago. Hollywood, I think, think red today. KC red with diamonds, Andy Reid. And he says back, yes, sir, love the sound of that. Think Hollywood Brown. Lights, camera, action. I'm just, I'm so happy. I'm like, I don't know if you can feel the happiness exuding out of me right now, but this is just crazy. Like, I knew the Chiefs needed a wide receiver, but I also knew how Brett Beach operated, and I don't really think I believe that he was going to get somebody. But Andy Reid, and he may be the best recruiter in football, he says, hey, you want a Super Bowl ring? Come get us. Come get us. And what's funny is Drew Tranquil on Wednesday evening tweeted out, hey, at primetime jet, think red and see Super Bowls. Guess what? Now Drew Tranquil and Hollywood Brown are teammates. This past year, Hollywood played 14 games and had over 500 yards and 51 receptions. Overall, these stats aren't eye-popping. I get it. But at the same time, you have to consider who was his quarterback, what was going on throughout the season. Guess what? Kyler Murray did not play a majority of the season. He had more games with Josh Dobbs and Clayton Toon. Pretty crazy. The last four seasons can get a better idea of what this looks like. So, the 1,000 yards. Guess what? Marquise Brown is the only 1,000-yard receiver to play with Lamar Jackson. Pretty crazy when you think about it. And on top of which, his time in Arizona. Played 12 games in 2022. Played 14 games in 2023. In that time, his starting quarterback was more often Colt McCoy or Clayton Toon and Josh Dobbs than it was Kyler Murray. 
This guy now has Patrick Mahomes for 17 games. He may be a 1,000-yard receiver with Rasheed Rice, with Travis Kelsey. The rest of the league should just give up because it's done. It's done. You want to call the Chiefs the evil empire? That's fine. We're taking over the entire universe, and you can't stop it. You can't. This was the last Infinity Stone. Everybody should give up. It's done. The Chiefs play in the AFC West, which is a pretty bad division. The Raiders, cool, you got Christian Wilkins. The one problem last year was the wide receivers. And guess what drop rate Marquise Brown has? 4%. MVS was 7%. Kadarius Tony, 13%. Pretty nice. Here's the new Chiefs wide receiver depth chart. I know, I'm telling you, I saw this and was just drooling out of my mouth immediately. Rasheed Rice at wide receiver one, Marquise Brown at wide receiver two, Kadarius Tony at wide receiver three, and then Sky Moore at wide receiver four with Justin Watson and Justin Ross as the wide receivers five and six. Now, I will say, given last year the Chiefs did have seven wide receivers on their roster throughout the entire year, I still think they draft a wide receiver. I don't think they cut Kadarius Tony or Sky Moore, though, at this point, because you're not saving anything. Kadarius Tony is a 2.5 cap hit. If you cut him, you don't save anything. You don't get any, you don't get any of that money back. Then with Sky Moore, I think you save maybe a million, but at this point, it's not really worth it. You're in the cap hit. You kind of labeled this out well. But I still think you go out and get a Keon Coleman, a Ladd McConkey, an Adonai Mitchell, at worst, a Devontae Walker, a Brendan Rice in round two if you go somewhere else in round one. You have to make sure that this receiver room is stacked for years to come. And although Hollywood Brown's deal is great, it is just one year. So make sure you prepare for the future by drafting a wide receiver that can stick with Rasheed Rice and Patrick Mahomes for the next four years. So Maybe I'm wrong, though. What do you think? Will the Chiefs draft a wide receiver in round one of the 2024 NFL draft? Type Y for yes, type N for no. If you think it's in for no, give me an explanation. You think they're going to draft one in the later rounds? Maybe they're going to go in the second round with the wide receiver? Let me know why you're thinking in for no. Get down in the comment section. I'd certainly appreciate just to have a, a bunch of Chiefs Kingdom members talking, talking with me today about this Marquise Brown signing and what they will do with their round one draft pick now. Let's kind of move on here to Legere State because it's important, and I think this is probably the biggest rumor we're going to talk about in the entire show. This is coming from Cam Marino, uh, NFL Draft Insider, saying, Strong wins in the direction of Snead returning to Kansas City to play on his tag. A couple of teams, that was being the Colts, the Dolphins, and the Lions, were aggressive in pursuit of Snead, but either went in other directions or hesitant to give up draft picks. Expensive player coming from a team who wants an expensive return. Tough situation. We'll see what happens. Now, obviously this is something we've talked about. We mentioned the Titans being in there as well, but I think after the Calvin Ridley signing, they took their name out of the pot. Well, guess what? The Colts were able to re-sign one of their own quarterbacks. Cornerbacks. The uh, Lions got Amik Robinson and a couple other pretty good guys to fill up that secondary. They went other directions now. Sneed is kind of in the spot where you're going to play on the franchise tag. 10:25 last night, Legarius Sneed, after the Marquise Brown signing, tweeted this out. Little emojis with the alert popping out of the guy's head and the upside down face emoji. What this means, could not tell you. He's becoming the new Chris Jones in terms of tweets. And um, I don't know what this means. I don't know if he's happy to be in Kansas City. I mean, he said he wants to be back, but he is also kind of like Chris Jones. He wants to be paid. I don't think he will sit out any games just because cornerback has been such a tough position for a lot of different reasons this year, and the draft has some good cornerbacks. So if he says anything like that, it, it could really kind of change up a lot of different things. But I just don't know what exactly to expect from LeJarius at this point. I want him to be in Kansas City. I don't think an extension is going to happen. I think he's going to play on the tag, and then we'll see what happens in the next year. Why? Well, because the Chiefs wanted at least a second-round draft pick, and I think that was just too high of a price to pay for the Colts, for the Lions, for the Titans. They just weren't willing to do that. Now, I know that there was talk about a potential third-round pick, but that was with the Titans, who, by the way, don't have a third-round pick. So I don't know where that report came from because that was obviously not right unless the Titans were going to trade for a third-round pick and then trade that for Snead, which would have been a wild situation. But now with them 
having Calvin Ridley, the Chiefs getting Marquise Brown, other teams kind of going in other different directions. We're almost a full week into free agency now. I think at this point, the price was just too high for people to pay. And so guess what? Legereus Sneed, you're going to be a three-peat Super Bowl champion, which is super nice. Obviously, I know you want to get paid, but at the same time, we know that money is hard to come by as a quarterback. And the NFL being a business, the Chiefs also want to make sure they get back in return what they think you're worth. $19.8 million, you play on the franchise tag, which is a pretty good number for a quarterback, by the way. Like, that's a really good number. Do, do I think he deserves more? Yes, because the things that he did last year against some of the top wide receivers in the NFL were absolutely wild. I just want to go through once again and talk about what he did to some top-tier guys. Because we've shown this before, but I just don't think people actually realize how good this is. A.J. Brown, one of the top wide receivers in the NFL. One reception, eight yards. D.J. Moore, three receptions, 41 yards. Stephon Diggs, four receptions, 24 yards. Which, by the way, they played Stephon Diggs twice. This was the better game. The other game, he had three receptions for 23 yards. And then Justin Jefferson, three receptions for 28 yards. Obviously, he did get injured in the latter half of that game. But still, that is a crazy stat line to have up and have on your resume. And it's not been just this past year. He's been great with the Chiefs for the past four years. And I think that's why he thinks he deserves to get paid. And I also agree with him. I, deserve, I think he deserves to be paid. But you also have to understand, $19.8 million is a lot. You are the franchise tagged player. And that's a good amount of money, and you will make a lot more if you do it again. Because this year was generational talent that he showed. If he does it again, he's going to get a bag and a half from somebody next year in free agency, or if the Chiefs decide to maybe pay him next year, we'll have to see. But I understand why the Chiefs are not giving him up easy, because you're not going to give away a guy who single-handedly, honestly, saved a couple games for you. I mean, I know Trent McDuffie is great, and I thought Trent McDuffie was honestly the better cornerback in the Super Bowl, but overall, LeJarrius Sneed was playing lights out through every single game of the year. Therefore, you have him on the franchise tag, you expect him to play, he wants to be in Kansas City, you have to get something very good in return to actually trade him away. Or, you don't. And the extension will come for him eventually. Uh, I feel bad for Jerry Steen because I know he deserves his money, but at the same time, come be a three-peat champion, man. $19.8 million is not chump change for a quarterback. You're getting paid a lot of money. Let's take a quick look at the free agency tracker for the Kansas City Chiefs, kind of go through all the moves they've done. Obviously, a couple of moves yesterday that we didn't get to talk about in full detail. Drew Tranquil is the first one to re-sign three years, $19 million, 13 of it guaranteed. This is the big news. Saturday night. Oh, man. That was a night. Five years, $158 million for Chris Jones. Uh, he basically said, I'm going to retire a chief, which uh, to me makes me believe that even after this five years are done, if he stays playing, he's going to sign a one-two-year deal with the Chiefs and just stay there. James Winchester, the long snapper, his 10th year now, but the Chiefs signs a one-year deal. Irv Smith, the first outside product coming into Kansas City, and uh, I like the deal. Irv Smith has a lot of upside, still a young guy. And I think the big thing about that, he's a receiving tight end to help out with Travis Kelsey. Past that, Deion Bush, the defensive back, comes back after a, uh, a stellar game in the AFC Championship, including an interception to, I'm not going to say seal the game, but really turn it on its head. He signs a one-year deal to come back. Patrick Mahomes then restructures his contract, clearing up $21.6 million. Mike Pinnell Jr., he comes back, don't have the full details of his contract just yet, but good to see him back, another interior defensive lineman. But it wasn't all, because they signed three interior defensive linemen yesterday. Mike Pinnell, Tershawn Wharton, a one-year $2.75 million. Turtles back, glad to see him there. We liked what we saw from last year. I'm happy to have him back in the wings. And then one that I honestly did not expect to happen, Derek Noddy is back with the Chiefs. No details on what his contract will include just yet. But Derek Noddy, who had a really good year last year, back with the Chiefs to help fill out the defensive line because that was an issue, even with Chris Jones. We wanted to make sure that defensive line was good. And then obviously, the big, the big deal, Marquise Brown, one deal, one year, $7 million guaranteed, could be worth up to $11 million. It's a good time because every single move was great. And honestly, yesterday was big in a lot of ways. It wasn't just Marquise Brown. It was getting Tershawn Warren back. It was getting Derek Nottie back. I think those are big moves. And Mike Pinnell played amazing in Super Bowl 58, so glad to see him come back just a couple days ago. I'm happy with the moves that Brett Beach made, but how happy are you? Great it for Brett Beach, free agency up until this point. There were people that were dogging on him, but man, I think he has done a stellar job. A, B, C, D, or F, get in the comment section and let me know. I gotta go A, 
I got to go A. Because the two things we wanted him to do, we wanted him to re-sign Chris Jones. He did that. We wanted him to get a wide receiver that could be a deep threat and make this team elite. I believe he did that with Marquise Brown, and he still has his first-round draft pick. He still has Legereus Sneed. He still got Drew Tranquil back. Brett Veach is a mastermind at work, and we should be very happy with what we got because I truly believe we have the best GM in all of the NFL. And yes, guess what? He's not done because he still has a little bit of money left to spend if he would like to. I doubt he does, but he could. But the bigger thing, the dude is a draft wizard, and we have some picks for him to go get some awesome, awesome players, which is why we're going to do some more mock drafts here on the channel and a bunch of other stuff coming up. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because free agency is a weekend. we got a bunch of moves. There's still talk about Clyde edwards Larry resigning, Jarek McKinnon resigning. So make sure you follow along for that. And on top of which, the draft, it's becoming closer and closer. Hit that subscribe button, Chiefs Kingdom. Appreciate you hanging out with us. For now, peace out.